Good evening, everyone, and uh, happy midweek to all of you. I tried my best to use the Zoom, but I'm not uh, happy with the result. <laughs> so I'll just go back to uh, this manual presentation uh, for tonight. So once again, we welcome each one of you to our midweek prayer service meeting. Shall we have a word of prayer before we proceed? Let us pray. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, we again thank you, O Lord, for this uh, another chance to have prayer meeting uh, with our brothers and sisters through a virtual meeting. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life and uh, also for this uh, wonderful uh, meeting that we ha were having tonight. We ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we may be able to understand your message for each and every one of us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, welcome everyone to our uh, prayer meeting this uh, Wednesday. I have still uh, memories of our camp out at Camp Hope last weekend together with our uh, brothers and sisters here in uh, Abundant Life Seventh-day Adventist Church. So, as I promised to you last uh, Wednesday, we will be dealing tonight about the uh, understanding of some of the pioneers about the Godhead or Trinity. So we are done with biblical foundations of the Trinity. We discuss about the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we found out in the Bible that God is not one person, but three persons. There is only one essence, and that essence is none other than God. But in one God, the Bible revealed to us that there is a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As a church, uh, we encounter um, different, uh, let's say, understanding about the Godhead. Some Adventists decided to follow the pioneers because they believed that uh, that's the original understanding of the pioneers. And uh, this is no secret for us. It is already revealed through literature and books that some of our pioneers were not uh, Trinitarian, as we all know today but uh, they believe in some other forms of teaching. So we will find out, okay, whether all the pioneers believe in Arianism or Modalism or Trinitarianism. Okay, so this is like a historical presentation. So what I'm going to do is I will do it manually, okay? Sometimes you will see the background here. I'll use my other laptop for you to see the quotation. I don't know if that is fine. Uh, I'll try to use Zoom, but uh, I'm not happy with the result. Uh, there is a delay of, I think, uh, 5 to 10 seconds. Okay. And I'm not happy with that. So I will go with uh, manual. So this is our topic tonight. I don't know if you will see that. Uh, the pioneers and the uh, Trinity. 
So there are some pioneers who don't believe in the Godhead or Trinity as uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are three persons of one God. But rather they, they believe in some other forms of understanding like modalism and Arianism. So we will see here some of the quotations from the pioneers. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, from Joseph Bates. Respecting the Trinity, I concluded that it was impossible for me to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, was also the Almighty God, the Father, one and the same being. So what did you notice here? Uh, Joseph Bates had different understanding of the Trinity, okay, as we know the Trinity today. Our understanding of the Godhead is this. We believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, they are three persons of one God. But for Joseph Bates, uh, it seems that Jesus Christ, uh, for him, is also the Father. They are one and the same being. Uh, we don't believe that. <laughs> they are not one and the same being. Okay? So, his understanding is different from us. And we don't believe that. And uh, this is the contention of Joseph Bates. So, meaning, his understanding is that the Son is also the same with the Father. They are one in the same being. And that is one form of modalism. Okay? Meaning there is one God. In modalism, there is one God who revealed in different modes. The one God is the Father. And the Father is also Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also the Father. There is no distinction of persons. As if uh, the same with uh, the contention of Joseph Bates, the one he, he was trying to reject. But we don't believe this, okay? Uh, the Son is not the Father. They are not one in the same being. And this is based on Joseph Bates. We don't believe this. Uh, but this is, uh, this was the statement that he said against the Holy Spirit as if, oh, against the Trinity, as if the Trinity believes in that the Father and, and the Son are one and the same being. That is not the case. So they have different uh, Trinity back then. All right? So, uh, did you see that? Just give me a thumbs up if you see that. All right? So that I can see that this presentation is uh, uh, good for all of us. Uh, you can see uh, well the presentation there. Okay, let us uh, continue then. So let's go to uh, Uriah Smith. This is uh, 1856. The doctrine called the Trinity claiming that God is without form or parts, that the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the three are one person, is another. So again, <laughs> uh, this is not the Trinity that we, that we believe based on the Bible. Uh, as you can see here, during the time, uh, as if uh, the presentation of Trinity is that the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one person. But we don't believe that. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three persons. Okay? And uh, Uriah Smith said, The doctrine called the Trinity, claiming that God is without form or parts, that the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the three are one person, is another. So we don't believe that. Right? So as you can see, uh, this is not what the Bible uh, told us, but this is the one that they rejected during the time. 
The three are one person. They are not one person. They are three persons, actually, based on uh, the Bible. So this is 1856. Uh, Again, James White, 1881. The father was greater than the son. So there is like a subordination there. In that he was first. The son was equal with the father. In that he had received all things from the father. So... I said this because uh, this kind of understanding is close to the understanding and teaching of the Catholic Church. The father or the son was equal with the father in that he had received all things from the father. He, uh, for the Catholic Church, uh, the father gave uh, divinity to his son. Okay. Everything. Uh, that's why he was called God. And the same with uh, James White during the time. The son was equal with the father in that he had received all things from the father. Okay. But again for him, the father was greater than the son in that he was first. Okay. So there is a subordination there. Uh, as you can see. Uh, this is based on 1881. And then uh, Laugh uh, a Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are each God. It would be three gods. Uh, do we believe in that? We don't believe in three gods. Okay, I will check and get the... Uh, Catholic uh, Catechism and I will read to you the statements of the Catholic Church uh, on, on this one. Okay? For the uh, Catholic Church, let me see here, okay, I will go back to uh, the statement made by James White. In Catechism of the Catholic Church, Second edition, page 73, okay? And since the Father has through generation given to the only begotten Son everything that belongs to the Father, except being Father, the Son has also eternally from the Father from whom He is eternally born that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Son. So based on the uh, Catechism of the uh, Catholic Church, I will show you the book, this one. Okay, this is a new version. And you will see here uh, what uh, they, they say about, or they, they believe about, their belief about the Son. And uh, I quote, And since the Father has through generation given to the only begotten Son, everything that belongs to the Father, except being Father, the Son has also eternally from the Father, from whom He is eternally born, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Son. So, uh, everything that belongs to the Father, uh, has given to the Son, except being Father. So it's like a uh, Catholic uh, understanding there. So let us uh, continue. Okay, we read from... Uh, we don't believe this, right? Uh, if Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are each God, it would be three gods. We don't believe that. Okay. 
So you will see they have different understanding of Trinity. That's why they rejected the Trinity. So in here, uh, and as to the Son of God, he would be excluded also, for he had God for his Father, and did at some point in eternity of the past have beginning of days. So for J. N. Andrews, Jesus Christ had beginning. Okay? There was a time that he was not existed for J. N. Andrews. And that's the point there. Okay? At some point in the eternity of the past had beginning of days. So for J. N. Andrews, uh, there was a time that he was not or the son did not exist. Okay? Only the father. That is their understanding. And then Uriah Smith, moreover, he is the beginning of the creation of God. Not the beginner, but the beginning of the creation. The first created being dating his existence far back be before any other created being or thing next to the self-existent and eternal God. So I want you to uh, remember that statement next to the self-existent and eternal God. So again, for Uriah Smith, Jesus Christ had beginning. Okay. There was a time that he was not and uh, as if he was uh, created, okay, uh, somewhere in the past. This is based on Uriah Smith, but uh, you would notice this is 1865, okay, but look at 1897, he changed his mind on on this one and then he said in 1897 moreover he is the beginning of the creation of god some attempt by this language to uphold the error that christ was a created being dating his existence anterior to that of any other created being or thing next to the self-existent and eternal god but the language does not necessarily imply that he was created. For the words, the beginning of the creation may simply signify that the work of creation, strictly speaking, was begun by him. So he changed his mind from this one. Uh, for him, before, he was created. Now he said, it does not necessarily imply that he was created. Okay? But uh, he explained the statement the beginning of the creation may simply signify that the work of creation, strictly speaking, was begun by him. That was 1897. But when you go back again, the year 1865, look at his understanding here. Okay? Jesus Christ or the Son the first created being dating his existence far back beyond any other created being or thing 1865 and then 1897 he changed his mind on this one okay so this is clear so they usually uh, change their understanding about jesus christ on uh, this issue this savior was the brightness of his father's glory and the express image of his person. He possessed divine majesty, perfection and excellence. He was equal with God. He was eternally rich, yet for our sakes became poor, that we through his poverty might become or might be made rich. He was clothed with light and glory, surrounded with the host of heavenly angels, waiting to execute commands. So imagine, he possessed divine majesty, perfection, and excellence. He was equal with God. So who said this? Uh, 
uh, Ellen White, 1869. Yet he put on our nature and came to sojourn among sinful mortals. Here is love that no language can express. It passes knowledge. Great is the mystery of godliness. Our souls should be enlivened, elevated, enraptured with the theme of the love of the Father and the Son to man. So, uh, that was 1869, okay? Ellen White said he possessed divine majesty, perfection, excellence. He was equal with God, 1869. And then 1872, the salvation of fallen men was procured at such an immense cost that angels marveled and could not fully comprehend the divine mystery that the majesty of heaven, equal with God, should die for the rebellious race. So now the son is equal with God. That was 1872. So let's continue on this uh, Testimonies of other uh, pioneers. But in the ordinance of baptism, according to the Gospel Commission, in which ordinance we take upon us, the name of the God we worship, He is known as what? The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But when we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as the true living God, our Creator, Preserver, and Savior, we at once and forever renounce and separate ourselves from every kind of and species of idolatry and false worship. This is based on E. Goodrich. It was uh, 1876. So can you imagine one of the pioneers uh, said this, that the God we worship known as the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then he repeated again, uh, but when we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as the true living God. Okay? So, not all pioneers are anti-Trinitarian, the Trinity that they uh, knew during the time. Because our Trinity today is different from the Trinity that they rejected during the time, as you can see in our presentation. But in here, uh, this uh, brother, yeah, E. Goodrich, mentioned that... Uh, they're the true living God, okay? The three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 1876. So, how about 1890? Then, as the church on earth is working by the direct command and agency of the three distinct personages in heaven, for the increase of the heavenly family, in his name shall we adopt them into this family, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, by Charles L. Boyd, the Trinity, Bible Echo and Science of the Times, 1890. It was 1890, okay? So let's continue. This is 1891, as in Haskell. He, Christ, is and was and is to come, the very Son of God, equal in power and nature to God himself. His coming to this earth was God manifest in the flesh, in all of his fullness. So this uh, brother, as in Haskell, believed that Jesus Christ, okay, is equal in power, nature, and God manifest in the flesh. 1891. This is 1891, December 15. We understand the Trinity as applied to the Godhead to consist of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the two former to be personal, spiritual beings, eternal and infinite in all the ways and attributes. The Holy Spirit is the representative of the deity in all parts of the universe. These supreme beings we cannot comprehend or measure. That was 1891. Okay, as you can see here, uh, they used the word Trinity there, 1891, and then 1896, from the figures which are brought out in Revelation, Ezekiel, and other scriptures, and from the language which is used in reference to the Holy Spirit. 
We are led to believe he is something more than an emanation, emanation from the mind of God. He is spoken of as a personality and treated as such. He is included in the apostolic benedictions and is spoken of by our Lord as acting in, in an independent and personal capacity as teacher, guide, and comforter. 1896 by G.C. Tenney. Okay? So, let's continue. This one is uh, from the pioneers, I think. There is altogether too little made of the work of the Holy Spirit's influence upon the church. Altogether, too much dependence is placed upon the individual human agencies to bring success into the church. The individual Christian will grow in grace just in proportion as he depends not on his or her smartness and supposed natural and acquired capabilities, but on the teachings and leadings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. In Christ's name, he personifies Christ, yet it uh, yet is a distinct personality. So, he or she, Ellen White, 1893, said that uh, the Holy Spirit is distinct, okay? But uh, he personifies Christ, yet is a distinct personality. So, he is not Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is not Jesus Christ, but rather distinct, okay? And he personifies Christ. This is the uh, answer to some uh, Adventists who said that the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. <laughs> but uh, Ellen White said uh, he personifies Christ, yet is a distinct personality. I know that uh, you know the word distinct, right? It's not the same, but distinct. Uh, 1893, Ellen White. Okay, this is also 1893. With that firmness and power, he uttered these words. The Jews had never before heard such words from human lips, and a convincing influence attended them. For it seemed that divinity flashed through humanity, as Jesus said, I and my Father are one. The words of Christ were full of deep meaning, as he put forth the claim that he and the Father were of one substance, possessing the same attributes. The Jews understood his meaning. There was no reason why they should misunderstand. And they took up stone to stone him. You know, when we say in theology that he and the Father were of one substance, okay, meaning they're one God, they possess uh, the same attributes. Okay, or essence or substance. The being is God. But they are two persons, father and son. Okay, so can you imagine Ellen White said that in 1893? Okay, Signs of the Time, page uh, 54. So if some people who claim to be SDA and they said, uh, uh, the Godhead or Trinity is not true because pioneers said this and said that. Uh, they really don't know what they are saying. Because I show you some of the pioneers rejected the Trinity that they knew back then is different from the Trinity that we know today. Our Trinity is based on the Bible. Okay? And even Ellen White uh, mentioned so many things about this. This is based on R.A. Underwood. It seems strange to me now that I ever believed that the Holy Spirit was only an influence in view of the work He does. But we want the truth because it is the truth. And we reject error because it is error. Regardless of any views we may formerly have held or any difficulty we may have had or may now have, when we view the Holy Spirit as a person, light is sown for the righteous. Satan's scheme is to destroy all faith 
in the personality of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, also in his own personality. It was once hard for me to see how a spirit could be a person, but when I saw that God, Christ, the angels, the fallen angels are referred to us spirit or spirits, although they are still persons. I could understand better now or better how the Holy Spirit can be a person. So can you imagine this guy uh, said that part uh, 1898, okay? And he even said that Satan's scheme is to destroy all faith in the personality of the Godhead. Who is that, that three persons? The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because during that time, uh, as I uh, showed you uh, earlier, that uh, the three persons are one person for them. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one person. Uh, that's their understanding. Okay? As you can see, this is 1898. 1900. F.E. Bolden. This is uh, what they used in church. Okay? Hymn 296. Praise ye the Father. Praise ye Jehovah. Praise ye the Savior. Praise ye the Savior. Praise ye the Spirit. Praise ye the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the eternal tree. Uh, they used this in church during the time 1900. Can you imagine? Praise the eternal tree. Right? Uh, the Sarab Ages, 671. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead, who would come with no modified energy but the fullness of the divine power. So, the third person of the Godhead, we all know is that. That is the Holy Spirit. We have been brought together as a school. And we need to realize that the Holy Spirit, who is as much a person as God is a person, is walking through these grounds unseen by human eyes. That the Lord God is our keeper and helper. He bears every word we utter and every thought of the mind. Manuscript 66, 1899. Okay, the Holy Spirit is a person. Again, another here. You can see, underline, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit has a personality. Else, He could not bear witness to our spirits and with our spirits that we are children of God. He must also be a divine person. This is 1906, manuscript 20, 1906. Okay? So let's continue. So we are in 1906. Let's go back a little bit, 1892. The Holy Spirit indicts all genuine prayer. I have learned to know that in all my intercessions, the Spirit intercedes for me and for all saints, but His intercessions are according to the will of God, never contrary to His will. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, and the Spirit, being God, knoweth the mind of God. Therefore, in every prayers of ours for the sick or for other deeds or needs, the will of God is to be regarded. Uh, for what man knoweth the things of the man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. 1892. So, you will see here, uh, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. And the spirit, being God, knoweth the mind of God. The spirit is a person, the spirit is divine. And here the Spirit being God knoweth the mind of God. Again, 1900. The work is laid out before every soul that has acknowledged his faith in Jesus Christ by baptism and has become a receiver of the pledge from the three persons 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, in here you will see that during 1900s, they can now say uh, there are three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Before, the pioneers, they believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one person. <laughs> okay? So, those uh, uh, people who believe in the pioneers so much, uh, you have to read some time if you have time. And uh, look whether your uh, understanding is right. Okay? And based on the Bible. Let me say this. Uh, these people are not the final authority. Uh, we believe that the Bible is our final authority when it comes to faith and doctrine. I, I showed you this one because of some Adventists that uh, uh, follow so much the pioneers. Okay, And uh, you will see here, not all pioneers uh, rejected the Trinity that we have now today. Because as a church, we know our church history. Our pioneers came from different denominations. Okay? But uh, as you can see, uh, now we are in 1900. They uh, gain uh, knowledge about the revelation of the Bible about the Godhead. Before Abraham was, I am. Christ is the pre-existent, self-existent Son of God. The message he gave to Moses to give to the children of Israel was, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me to you. The prophet Michael writes of him, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, thou, thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. So from everlasting, this is uh, the Son. And uh, Ellen White said, uh, Christ is the pre-existent, self-existent Son of God from everlasting. Let's continue. Through Solomon, Christ declared, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of His way, before His works of old, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was, when there was no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his, his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. As one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. And speaking, again, of his pre-existence, Christ carries the mind back through dateless ages. So for Ellen White, Christ has no beginning. See? He assures us, that there, there never was a time when he was not in close fellowship with the eternal God. He, to whose voice the Jews were then listening, had been with God as one brought up with him. 1900. So for some old pioneers, right, we found out that Jesus, the son had beginning or has beginning. Uh, the first created being. But uh, Ellen White said 1900, he assures us that there, there never was a time when he was not in close fellowship with the eternal God. Because as the quotation says, uh, in speaking of his pre-existence as God, Christ, Christ means the anointed, the Messiah, uh, the, the covenant name, carries the mind back through dateless ages. 1900. So, the third angel's message embraces Sinai and Calvary, the law of God and the gospel of Christ, God the Father and God the Son. 
And when this message ends, the work of God for the salvation of men, the mystery of God, will be finished. 1900. So can you imagine they said God the Father and God the Son? <laughs> and uh, we read uh, prior to this, okay, that the Holy Spirit is divine and the Spirit being God, okay, knoweth the mind of God. Okay, the, the Holy Spirit is the third person. So, 1900, God the Father, God the Son. It's mentioned. So, I think, uh, I do believe that this will help you a lot, okay? And do not be deceived by those uh, deceivers who will come to you, okay? And will give you so many things. They really don't know what they are saying. In the first chapter, of Second Peter is presented the progressive work in acquiring the Christian graces. Works on the plan of addition. God has pledged himself to work in his behalf upon the plan of multiplication. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, Jesus our Lord. The work is laid out before every soul that has acknowledged his faith in Jesus Christ by baptism and has become a receiver of the pledge from the three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, 1900, okay? 1904, when the human nature of the Son of Mary changed, or was the Son or was the human nature of the Son of Mary changed into the divine nature of the Son of God? No. The two natures were mysteriously blended in one person. The man, Christ Jesus, in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in the human nature of Christ, in the human nature of Christ dwelt the fullness of Godhead bodily. And that is why you will see sometimes the statement of Ellen White, the man Jesus Christ is not the Lord God Almighty. She said that. Because then the human nature of Jesus Christ is not God. But in that human nature dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? But here, uh, it is a mystery. It's like mysteriously blended in one person. Okay, 1904. And that is why we also believe that Jesus Christ is man, because he was born of a woman. But when it comes to his deity, his essence, he is God. Okay, the personality of the Father and the Son, and also the unity that exists between them are presented in the 17th chapter of John in the prayer of Christ for his disciples. Neither pray I for thee alone, for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, the unity that exists between Christ and his disciples does not destroy the personality of either. They are one in purpose, in mind, in character, but not in person. It is thus that God and Christ are one. Okay? So, you have a glimpse now, okay, when Jesus Christ said, we are one, the Father and I are one. 1905. So, we're closing to 1915. Okay, 1906, the Lord Jesus Christ, the divine Son of God, existed from eternity, a distinct person, yet one with the Father. Okay, when we say eternity, uh, what do you mean by eternity? No beginning, right? But <laughs> some uh, Adventists that believe in some erroneous teachings, uh, Jesus Christ or the Son has beginning. But look at uh, Ellen White said, 1906, existed from eternity a distinct person. Okay? I think this is 
Two years now. Alright. GB Star. 1906. We are now in the 1906. So I'll just read uh, the one with the underline. Okay, The scriptures teach that there are three persons in the Godhead. Jesus, through the spirit of the prophecy, gives to the Holy Spirit the position of the third persons of the Godhead. So they said uh, now uh, there are three persons of the Godhead. Okay? 1906. 1907. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one and receive worship. Each one represents all other members of the Trinity. That was 1907. Okay? These are our pioneers. In the 4th and 5th centuries, many absurd views were set forth respecting the Trinity views that stood at variance with reason, logic, and scripture. Formed the confusing idea of one God in three gods and three gods in one God. The unexplainable dictum of theology. The enemy gladly leads to what appears to be more rational, though no less idea, that there is no trinity, and Christ is merely a created being. There is a trinity, and in it there are three personalities. We have the Father, described in Daniel 7 and in 10, a personality surely the ancient of days enthroned. See? Uh, as you can see here, uh, the Father is mentioned. And then, in Revelation 1, 13 to 18, we have the Son described is also a personality. The appearance and form of the Holy Spirit is not described. He is the agency whereby God revealed His Word to man. And of Him, Christ declares, He shall speak of Himself. John 16, 13. Hence, the man who speaks much of himself has not a very close acquaintance with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is spoken of through the scriptures as a personality. Okay, 1909, July 19, we're getting closer there. Okay, is the Holy Spirit a person? The Holy Spirit is represented in the Bible as one of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit has a personality. While the Holy Spirit has a personality, and is represented as an intelligence, yet it is spoken of in any way that we cannot comprehend its personality, it is evident that the Holy Spirit is one of the Trinity and fully represents God and Christ and the Trinity. 1910. So five more years. Okay? Because Ellen White died in 1915. 1911. The Spirit of God is the third person of the Godhead. If we believe the Bible, unquestionably we must believe the personality of the Holy Ghost. Though we are unable to define that personality, this Comforter whom Jesus promised to send is one of the three living persons in the heavenly trio, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, 1911. 1912. As within the mystery of the Trinity, there are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, loved and a lover, not dependent on the creation for the fullness of communion and joy. Even so, God did not lead men in splendid isolation. He made for him a helpmeet, male and female, created he them. Okay? So, again, uh, truth is progressive for our church uh, pioneers, okay? They follow the revelation of the Bible. Now in here, this is uh, Rebion Herald, October 9, 1913, page 21. Uh, for the benefit of those who may desire to know more, particularly the cardinal features of the faith held by this denomination, we shall state that Seventh-day Adventists believe, one, in the divine trinity this trinity consists of the eternal father a personal spiritual being omnipotent omniscient infinite in power wisdom and love of the lord jesus christ the son of the eternal father through whom all things were created 
and through whom the salvation of the redeemed host will be accomplished. The Holy Spirit, the third person, the Godhead, the one regenerating agency in the work of redemption. Can you imagine they said uh, the word Trinity there? The Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the third person, the Godhead. Okay? So don't believe these people, my dear brothers and sisters. They really don't know what they are saying. As I showed you a while ago, since what, 1850s until now, uh, you will see the progressive revelation of the Bible to them. And when they uh, expose themselves to the teaching of the Bible, uh, they accept or accepted the truth which is found in the Bible. And these are their statements. 1914. Okay. The Holy Spirit is the third person, the Godhead. We must recognize that the Holy Spirit is not merely an influence. Both the Old and New Testaments refer to him as a personal, as a real personality. God wants us to see in the Holy Spirit more than a saving, friendly influence. He is our personal friend, a personal God. 1915, there we go. The Godhead has been described as follows. The Father is all the fullness of the Godhead invisible. The Son is all the fullness of the Godhead manifested. The Spirit is all the fullness of the Godhead acting immediately upon the creature. 1915. Okay. So this is the last one. A.G. Daniels. 1915, the Holy Spirit, the third person, the Godhead, and Christ's representative on earth, is set forth and exalted as the heavenly teacher and guide sent to this world by our Lord to make real in the hearts and lives of men all that he made possible by his death on the cross. Okay? Uh, uh, A.G. Daniels uh, said this, uh, because uh, of the influence made by Ellen White through his writings. And he said this uh, statement. Uh, as you can see here, uh, he was saying that Ellen White, okay, the Holy Spirit and Christ is set forth and exalted as the heavenly teacher. Uh, in the writings of Ellen White. So this is 1915, August 5, 1915. So as you can see now, uh, from the beginning of our history as a church, uh, there are some pioneers that rejected the Trinity. Again, let me say this, the Trinity that they knew is not the Trinity that we believe today. Because uh, during the time, the understanding of the Trinity, there are one person of one God. Okay? That the Lord Jesus Christ is the same as the Father. Or He is the Father as well as the Son. Form of modalism and subordinationism. But uh, we all know in uh, the history of the church, uh, not all pioneers uh, are against the Trinity, or we are against the Trinity. But some pioneers accepted the biblical teaching of the Trinity. And I showed you uh, some statements of these people. So let me uh, again say this to you, my dear brothers and sisters. If people... Okay, coming to you or sending you a message through email and uh, social media saying that, oh, the church, you know, accepted this teaching of the Catholic Church about Trinity and our pioneers don't believe that. Now, I show you uh, the, ev the evidence or evidences about that. Not all pioneers uh, rejected 
the biblical teaching of the Trinity, but their understanding of the Trinity is different from what we have now. So as you can see here, until 1915, truth is progressive. When they study their Bible, they believe the teachings of the Word of God and they accepted it. Okay? That is uh, our stand uh, until now, today. So, I hope that this uh, presentation uh, helps you a lot in your journey. Okay? As you read your uh, Bible. And I praise the Lord uh, for uh, this one. So, uh, can you imagine, uh, I read some of this. Uh, I watched some uh, video of this presentation. I made some research on this one. And because as a leader, as a pastor, I heard so many things. And even from the last district where I came from, uh, the one family there who don't believe in this uh, teaching, but uh, I never judge them, okay? But our task is to let them know and other people know what we believe based on the Word of God. So, praise the Lord for this uh, presentation. I hope that this one helps you a lot. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, and we can call you our Father. And uh, Jesus Christ, as our Lord, at the same time, our brother. And the Holy Spirit, who comfort us and guide us into all the truth. Thank you, O Lord, for uh, this uh, time that you have given to us. Tonight, Heavenly Father, uh, have mercy on us and uh, may you give uh, attention to our prayer request, unspoken prayer request and personal prayer request, Heavenly Father. There are some people, O oh Lord, that are in sick bed. Um, please be with them tonight, O oh God. Have mercy on us always so that we can find your grace every day of our lives. We ask your blessings to be with us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you all, brothers and sisters in Christ. Happy midweek.